Hi everybody. You know, sometimes I get messages from members of the group uh, asking me certain questions about food, and one of the more common ones is, Dave, how do I cook shrimp? Well, I've done a couple shrimp videos, but the simple answer to that is, it depends on what you're going to do with it. There's uh, different types of shrimp, there's different ways you can purchase shrimp, and uh, there's all kinds of dishes you can make with shrimp. And to explain that a little further, I'll give you to my friend, uh, Bubba. Shrimp is the fruit of the sea. You can barbecue it, boil it, broil it, bake it, saute it. There's um, shrimp kebabs, shrimp creole, shrimp gumbo, pan fried, deep fried, stir fried. There's pineapple shrimp, lemon shrimp, coconut shrimp, pepper shrimp, shrimp soup. Shrimp stew, shrimp salad, shrimp and potatoes, shrimp burger, shrimp sandwich. That's, that's about it. Okay, so you're in the supermarket and you're looking at shrimp. And chances are you're going to be either in the fish area where they have some defrosted stuff already out there. Or most likely you're going to be looking in the frozen section and you're going to see both uh, cooked and raw shrimp and you're really not sure what to do with either one. As far as I'm concerned with the cooked shrimp, it should only be used in shrimp salads uh, or uh, used in a shrimp cocktail uh, if you want to be lazy. Because uh, other than that, it's, if you try to cook it any further than what it already is, it's going to become rubbery and nasty, and you just it, it's so much better just to go with the fresh. Now, while you got the package in your hand, you can notice that there's some numbers here, uh, like, and, and we'll go over those numbers in a few minutes, but I like to flip it over and see where the shrimp is from. Uh, I try to avoid shrimp that's coming from India or Vietnam or Thailand unless it's a tiger shrimp. So what I'm basically looking for is shrimp that is farmed from the Gulf states, like from uh, Gulf of Mexico, Texas, Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, West Florida. Uh, I mean, all of those together, they produce probably over 240 million tons of shrimp every year. And it's, there's like 2,000 different varieties of shrimp, but mainly, basically there's three that you're going to find in the supermarket. Uh, the first one is a, uh, a pink shrimp. And as the name suggests, the shrimps are generally pink, uh, when, uh, and, but when they're raw, they can become white or gray. Um, they're small in size. They usually have a very high count on those numbers on the bag. The higher the number of the count, the smaller the shrimp. And uh, they're nice for salads because they're mild and sweet and they add a, a nice texture to a shrimp salad. Second one is this one here, the uh, white shrimp. Uh, white shrimp is the more, probably the most common one. And uh, you usually use them for boiling, steaming, stuffing, grilling, baking, frying, uh, and they usually come in different varieties like Gulf White or Pacific White, and they're one of the main go-tos that uh, chefs will use or home cooks because of their classic flavor. Um, they have a sweet taste, a nice firm texture, and they're pretty easy to clean. Now, the other one was the larger ones, uh, the Mac Daddies of the shrimp, and that's the tiger shrimp. And you can see it here where it, it looks like it's kind of got some tiger stripes on the back. And uh, these are not only wild, but they're also in farms from Thailand, Vietnam, Philippines. And uh, I haven't seen them uh, anywhere else besides there. So if you want the the larger they can grow up to 12 inches long and they're the, probably the best for throwing on the grill uh, without skewers or stuffing them or butterflying them open and uh, fantailing them out and, and, and frying them in the air fryer these are the big big shrimp and uh, they are prized for their mild flavor
Okay, now that we've learned probably more than we wanted to learn about shrimp <laughs> and the different kinds, um, we got to decide what we're going to make. Are we going to have a um, wonderful chicken shrimp gumbo? Uh, perhaps we're going to have some grilled shrimp kebabs. Maybe you want just uh, a simple, tasty, classy shrimp cocktail. Or maybe a crispy coconut shrimp in the air fryer. Or is it going to be like a bowl of lemon garlic uh, shrimp with pasta? Now, depending on what we're going to make is going to determine how we're going to cook the shrimp. There's a lot of different ways. Are we going to pan fry it? Are we going to uh, deep fry it? Are we going to um, air fry it? Are we going to bake it? Are we going to grill it? All of those things we'll get to eventually on my videos. And I've already done the air fryer uh, shrimp which you'll find if you subscribe to my YouTube videos, you'll be able to see that. And the most common one that we're going to use, I'll do for you today, and that's going to be the pan sear. Normally you're going to do the shrimp towards the end of the dish uh, because it cooks so quickly and you want it nice and warm and tender when you serve it. So you're already going to have the pasta and the veggies and everything else cooked, any cream sauces, and then you're going to add the shrimp at the end. You can also pan sear it in a separate pan and then just toss it in with the, the, the pasta and the sauce and everything. This is going to give you a really tender and uh, juicy shrimp. Um, if you've made the mistake, like a couple people have, where they try to cook the already cooked shrimp, and try to reheat it, you're going to have a tough rubber band. It's going to be, like I said, cooked shrimp is garbage unless you want a quick uh, cocktail sauce or if you want to throw it in a salad or you want to make shrimp salad, chop it up and add mayo or something disgusting, but I don't know. Um, that's what cooked shrimp is good for. You always use raw shrimp, even if it's frozen. It's better to thaw it out. We're going to do it right from a frozen bag today. We're going to thaw it out. We're going to clean it, and we're going to pan sear it. And you can add pan seared shrimp to just about anything. You can have it on your own. You can do it Cajun style. You can put it in gumbo. You can put it um, in a ton of different things. So let's just keep it simple, and we'll do pan seared shrimp just for today. I have different kinds of shrimp in the freezer downstairs. I have some large tiger shrimp down there, uh, frozen, that I use for the coconut shrimp and um, um, for grilling if I want to, just without skewers. But basically what I always use is the 21 to 30 count. And what that is, you'll find it right there on the package, is there's approximately 21 to 30 shrimp and a one pound package. This is a one pound package. And you can also see that it's a Gulf shrimp. Just because it says it here and it's saying it's a product of the USA and everything, I still look at the packaging on the back to find out where it's, where it's coming from. So this is a good size everyday shrimp. It's raw, it's frozen. I'm going to take it from the package just like you would find it and we're going to go step by step through thawing it and then I'm going to pan sear some of them for lunch and I'm going to uh, boil uh, the rest of them just to have cooked already for shrimp cocktail or shrimp on ice with a little bit of cocktail sauce and some lemon. It's a great food and I'm going to show you how to do both of those right now. So I'm going to open up the frozen shrimp package. And the proper way to defrost shrimp, according to the health department, is under running water that's less than 70 degrees. 
So I've got this in the bowl here and I'll check on it every now and then. You can tell that, that water is less than 70 degrees. You can measure it if you want with a thermometer. But uh, we're just going to let these sit. Wow, shark or something got that one. Now normally I would do this over the sink, but for the uh, ease of filming, I'm going to uh, do it here on the counter. I've got the shrimp bag off to the side here. These are the thought out shrimp. Some of them are split a little more easily and other ones are not. So what we want to do is we want to get the shell off of the shrimp and I'm putting the shrimp shells in the bag. Now if you want to have a fancy presentation of your, of your shrimp you want to stop peeling right at the end knuckle here and that way they have that bright orange tail uh, of the shell something to hold on to um, but when I have this in a, a personally when I have it in a fresh dish this just gets in the way because there's usually a sauce all over it and I'm trying to peel the damn tail off so for ease of eating for me at home I don't need fancy uh, I'm going to take all of the shell off and by doing that it also allows me to open up the back end of the shrimp as well and I want to open that up and I just want to make sure it's completely clean out I'm going to throw this back in the bowl but uh, we're going to rinse these and uh, double check them over by the sink once I get the peels off now one of the reasons I take the peels and I put them into a separate bag is for later um, these things will stink to high heaven if you uh, do not get rid of them and I will take those shells and I will either throw them in the garbage and take the garbage out right away or I will uh, I'll put it in a Ziploc bag if, if the bag is be able to reseal I'll Ziploc it shut. One quick story I, I, is that uh, there was a couple that was going through a really bad divorce and the husband said you know what I'm keeping the house. I'm keeping the house for my new hot girlfriend and um, you're going to be out on the street. So the wife before leaving the house decided to get a bunch of shrimp and get the shrimp shells and without the hubby knowing she stuffed the shrimp shells into the shower or the curtain rods above the windows and she shoved them in like the bedroom underneath uh, in a post where nobody would think of looking and those things became extremely rotted. So it got so bad that this guy is like trying to figure out where is this stank coming from and they couldn't figure it out. They repainted it, they recarpeted, they did everything they possibly could do and they could not figure out where this stink was coming from and it was just getting worse and worse. They called an exterminator, they thought there was something dead in the walls, they could not figure out what the hell the stink was and he decided to end up leaving the house and selling it for very cheap. So I'm not recommending anyone do that, but I'm just saying don't uh, underestimate the odor of these shrimp shells when they start passing. So put them in a bag like I'm doing and get them out of the house as quickly as you can. So let me finish cleaning these off and then we'll go over to the sink and I'll show you how to open them up and to uh, make sure that they're fully clean. <clears throat> okay, well I know it's not the best of you, but I've got the shells off. And I'm just going to examine each one of these here. And I'm going to make sure there's no poop in the tail. There's always a little bit. 
and I'm going to keep it nice and clean and I'm going to lay it over on some paper towels here. You see this is this is the crap you want to get out. Just going to run your finger down through there. Look at it. It's nice. Put it over on the side. Now some of these aren't split at all, and you can see there's a dark vein running down here. So I'm going to cut just gently along that whole thing. And I'm going to clean that whole section out. Because there's nothing more disgusting to give any of your friends or family than a dirty shrimp. You want just that nice fleshy meat that's in there. Cut down the back. And take all that crap out. Okay. Let me make sure these are finished and that they're nice and clean. And we will move forward with the cooking. As promised, this is going to be a simple, easy thing to do, and it's going to be step by step. So over here, I've got a pot of water, and I'm boiling it. And once that gets to a boil, I'm going to add some salt to it, some sea salt, and a little bit of lemon juice, and I'm just going to uh, let that boil for a few seconds, and then I'm going to shut the heat off. And once it stops boiling, which is pretty quick with a gas stove, then I'm going to add the shrimp to it. And after I add the shrimp to it, I'm going to watch it and I'm going to cover it up and I'm going to check it after about four minutes. Between four to six minutes, that shrimp should be done. On the other hand, over on the counter here, I'm going to have another bowl. And I'm going to fill that with ice water, a lot of ice and some cold water. So when I take the shrimp out of the hot water after the four to six minutes, I'm going to immerse it right into the uh, ice cold water and I'm going to chill it. That stops the cooking and it keeps it from getting rubbery. You'll know when the shrimp is done because it's uh, got like an opaque color and it's, it's, uh, it's cooked through. I mean, that four to six minutes for the shrimp and uh, you'll see the difference. So I'm just waiting for the water to boil. I've got my uh, my Puss Puss Kitten uh, apron on, my favorite lucky apron. And uh, we're going to boil the shrimp. And once the shrimp is finished boiling, then we're going to break out a, a frying pan and we're going to pan sear some shrimp for you. And uh, it's going to be a good lunch. Mm -mm. I hope I hope this is helping you. I really do hope this is helping you with the whole shrimp thing, because I don't want to go over it again. Future videos are going to say clean the shrimp, and this is how we're going to prep it. All right. Step by step, as promised. Got the water. It is rapidly boiling. I'm going to add a good amount of sea salt, maybe a good palmful, maybe even a little, maybe two palmfuls. Get that ocean sea salt water in there. So now that that's boiling, I'm going to use some regular lemon juice and I'm going to pour some of that lemon juice in there. And you can add um, uh, fresh chives if you want or or some uh, bay leaf or some some people put in old bay seasoning things like that but really all you need is salt water and some uh, lemon juice you can put lemon slices in if you want so I'm going to shut the heat off wait for it to with the gas stove I love gas stoves it only takes a few minutes to stop boiling 
and I'm going to put about 15 of these raw shrimp in. Now you see the color of them now. They're going to change color as they get in there. So I'm going to drop those in. Boom, they're starting to change color already. I'm going to cover it up and I'm going to set the timer for four minutes. And I'm going to check those babies after four minutes. So I'm pretty sure they're going to be done in four minutes. We'll come back. Okay, here we are at the end of four minutes. Shut that timer off. I've got my ice bath here because I'm pretty confident these are going to be done. And those are done. They're too hot for me to handle right now. I'm going to take one out of the ice water in a second for you. What we're looking at is uh, we're looking for the beautiful white flesh here. I don't know if it's going to be in focus or not, but beautiful white flesh. It's pink all the way through, a little bit of orange, and it's not rubbery, but it's very firm. So that is boiled shrimp. So let's get ready to pan sear the shrimp. First we've got the clean shrimp, and I'm going to hit them with a little bit of salt, sea salt. I'm going to hit them with some smoked paprika. Now you can season these however you like. You can put Cajun powder on them, um, whatever you like. I'm just doing something really simple, basically to show you um, the cooking. A little bit of black pepper. And I'm just going to flip these over. And again, I'm going to hit them with a little bit of paprika. Any questions? Okay, it's pretty simple. Let's get the pan going. Now we've got this pan started on medium-high heat. It's the middle setting for this stove. I'm going to do a little bit of garlic-infused olive oil spray. And I'm going to add just about a tablespoon of butter. I've got the shrimp nearby. And I'm just going to wait for that butter to... Okay, the butter is melted, the pan is nice and hot, and we're just going to put the shrimp down. And we are going to cook these shrimp. They're not that big, so we're probably going to do a minute and a half on each side without overcrowding it. And I will set the timer right now for two minutes. You can see how it's starting to get a little orange on the bottom. And you look at the center portion here, and it's going to start getting a little more white. That, that translucent color is going to turn into a kind of a milky color as it cooks up and through. Okay, it's been about a minute and a half. I'm just going to flip these over. I'm going to kind of move quickly so that they all cook evenly. And I'm going to let this go for about another minute. See that beautiful white color, crispiness on the outside.
One minute's done. Shutting the heat, picking this up. And I'm going to transfer these shrimp right over. And it is serving time for these. I want to serve them immediately. Both sides are evenly cooked. It looks and smells absolutely beautiful. And folks, that's all there is to pan-seared shrimp. You can put this on top of pasta with some cream sauce. Um, you could eat it just like it is. Uh, it's, it's really awesome. And you saw how simple it was to cook. The hardest part is cleaning it. So let's try them out. Here we have the pan-seared shrimp with a little bit of uh, smoked paprika, salt and pepper. And over here we have boiled shrimp cocktail on a bed of ice with some beautiful cocktail sauce. Two separate meals which should please just about anybody. So let's uh, give it a try. Mm. How beautiful, how tasty refreshing, ice cold, tender. Oh my goodness, it doesn't get much better than this. Wow. So good. Let's try the pan seared one. warm buttery texture smokiness from the paprika nice little bit of a sear on it oh, oh my god I hope this has helped you. I have hoped it answered all your shrimp questions. If you got any further questions about shrimp, let me know and uh, message me like you have been doing and uh, drop me a, a note down below. So anyway, it's been a nice discussion about shrimp. So hope you enjoy your day. Hope you get out there and buy some shrimp and have it tonight. Delicious. So good, so good. <laughs>